this video. In today's video, we will be continuing our alternate future of the United States series. And one of the first things is, is that a coup d'etat happens in Delaware, which leads to a pro to a communist government, which ends up joining the Communist League. With Texas threatening Oklahoma, which has, which is days. And this is where the League of Democracies so that's any more further aggressions. If you don't with leave Oklahoma this instant, we will declare war on you. Which is the truth. The CSA doesn't believe it. With nations bordering them, joining the Freedom League. With it being not long till the freedom and democracy declares war on them. You know, when most of these became communist, with the Freedom League being the last of the democracies, there's a few imperialist countries. Uh, the Communist League quickly jumping in on the war. And honestly, this wasn't a surprise. And with New England joining on their own side, the Imperial League has joined the war. With not much, a, with not too much of a surprise, but enough of a oddity to catch them off guard was the entrance of California, which they figured wouldn't happen as this was a defensive pact, but they still kept eye on just in case they would do something. With, with Cascadia advancing into Idaho, and over here there's some advances, but one area in particular, the advantage is also in this area for them. Delaware meeting up with d defense lines with their allies. And with the help of, oh, at this point, the, the Imperialist League has pretty much a non-aggression pact with them. And they're really not against each other at all. Despite on paper, it might look that way. They shouldn't be friends, imperialism and communism. They managed to make it work. With the biggest advances happening along the Mississippi, because a lot of these nations along the Mississippi, which used to be states, became powerful, but not only that, but the coastal nations, which were powerful, have already been taken out, as their war wasn't the best. With Ohio being really strong, and managing to take the capital of, I mean Chicago, not the capital. They managed to take Chicago quickly. And they quickly move up to Detroit, which they take quickly. And they then take Baton Rouge. What am I even saying? That's not even that city. Why am I saying something weird yet? Don't even know what, why I'm in Louisiana all of a sudden, but yeah. Let's just say that. At this point, I'm not even sure what's going on. I might be right. No, it's not. With most of Oklahoma, all right, with all of Oklahoma fallen, the Freedom League slowly moving into this country. But on the other hand, let's go to the western, northern, western front, whatever you want to call it. With people becoming inspired. Or people not wanting to fight for the cause. Or they being funded. Anti-war effort being funded in part by this league. The communists fund the idea that this war is meaningless. Just to gather attention. With the imperialism... And the communists agreeing to some things. Including trade agreements. And these trade agreements go really far. And honestly. 
they're only being able to hold the defensive in some areas. Manage on the Texan front, but with California, they're struggling. With California becoming like a powerful nation, and it's seeming like there's no way they're losing this war. With a fall of the offensive into the Mississippi in the area. It was a failed offensive. But the advances do slow significantly. And these slowed advances are significant as it means the offensives are being slowed, slowed down. With that, with Wisconsin being taken out, Montana and Colorado or Kansas or Nebraska, no, Nebraska, Wyoming was taken out. And an offensive is made by California to Minnesota. The spearhead. And the spearhead eventually links up with another spearhead. Well, I'm moving up there. And the communists moving over here. With, yeah. That falling to that line. With this oh, advance speeding up. Of them taking huge swaths of land. Ultimately, a big chunk of land does go to the Imperialist League. Which they agree to do what they want. On certain state lines. We have all of Minnesota going to them. For certain. And then they go to the Peace Treaty. Enlarging themselves to levels not seen in a while. Like the Californian Commune. Or the Communist States of America. Or Delaware. They're all too large. Something needs to change. The Imperial League is eyeing to the south for more expansionist ideals. And after a while voting and stuff, formal, formally, this area is annexed. Formerly, after this is annexed, they're starting to eye the CSA's weakness, which is disagreements between some of the states. California doesn't seem to have anything showing signs of stopping. But with votes and a puppet owned by them and their ally, they all come in favor of joining. But the reality is the vote can't be trusted, really. And so Cascadia votes to join to form the Pacific commune the Pacific the commune of Pacific states is what it's known as with the communist states of America not agreeing so much with California's ideas but that's for the next episode where we see how their disagreement goes and that's all for today's video please like and subscribe why she subscribes so we can get to a thousand subscribers and we were at, last time I looked, 931 subscribers, which is 69 away from our goal of 1,000 subscribers by September 1st. So if you could, please subscribe. That'd be great. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching today's video. That's all for today's video. Wild Mapper out, but not until you subscribe. Bye, guys.